Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will move on to the next cell organelle that is mitochondria. So what is mitochondria? Again, a very different and weird name. The term mitos, it means thread. And chondria means granules. So something which is thread-like with granules, something like that. So what is mitochondria? These are rod-shaped organelles bounded by two membranes. So when I say rod-shaped, they are extremely thin. That is why they have been compared to a thread. So a thread-like organelle which is bounded by two membranes so again so you see there are so many cell organelles which are bounded by a two membrane that is a double membrane is there outside it is the site of aerobic respiration so now you understand its importance respiration is something must for each and every cell because this is the process by which energy is produced in the form of atp molecules and without energy a cell cannot perform any of its activity. So mitochondria is the place where this aerobic respiration takes place. Now, the number of mitochondria present in one cell varies. It can be lesser in number, it can be more in number, so it varies from cell to cell. If you ask about their shape, as I said, very thin rod shaped, sometimes they are cylindrical or sausage shaped as well. They are known as the powerhouse of the cell because they produce, they are the place where the energy is produced. That is why it is called powerhouse. So it is the powerhouse of the cell. So where do we see mitochondria? If you see this structure is mitochondria. This entire structure is mitochondria. Uh, generally, they are uniformly distributed throughout the cytoplasm. If you see everywhere it will be it is not that it is concentrated at some place it is like uniformly distributed throughout so look at its double membrane you have an outer membrane this is this one is the outer membrane and then you have the inner membrane so this inner line is the inner membrane so you can see the inner membrane here so this is the inner membrane this one and the space between outer and inner membrane is known as intermembrane space. Now let us look at the structure of mitochondria. This is how a mitochondria look like. It consists of an outer membrane as I mentioned before also. This is the outermost membrane. You can see this red colored uh, membrane. So the outer line of the red color membrane, this red membrane is outer membrane and this one is the inner membrane this yellow colored membrane so outer membrane is smooth and porous continuous limiting boundary of mitochondria so it is there throughout it is not interrupted anywhere this is smooth but it is porous that is there are small pores in this outer membrane inner membrane is deeply folded as you can see here this yellow colored structures it is a folded membrane there are so many folds and folds provide greater surface area to generate ATP. Why are there so many folds? The, the same concept, if you have a, a wire, if you keep the wire like this in this much of area, so this will be the area which will be available. Now if you want to increase the surface area but you know that you have only this much of space, what do you do? You fold the same wire like this. So when you fold the same wire, what happens? If here in the same space you could accommodate one meter of wire, now you are able to accommodate almost three meters. So your area of absorption is actually increasing, your surface area is increasing. So similar is the case here. Now it has been folded in this way so that the surface area increases. When the surface area increases, more and more ATP molecules can be produced. Then the third part is cristae. What is cristae? This is the inner membrane is compartmentalized into 
parts called cristae. So see, the inner membrane has been so deeply folded that each of these parts, like one part, again two part, again three part, so each of these parts have been given a name called cristae. Now please do not get confused with cristae and cisternae. Cisternae was something else which we discussed. What was cisternae? They were the they were each and every slice of the Golgi apparatus structure. So that was cisternae and this is cristae. Matrix, it is the ground substance or the material which is enclosed by the inner membrane. So this blue colored structure which you see everywhere. So that is the matrix. So now not only that, uh, mitochondria has its own DNA, it has its ribosomes. So ribosomes are look also present here. You see these dotted structures, they are ribosomes. So proteins can be synthesized within mitochondria. It has its own DNA. It also has the ATP synthetase molecules. So these are some of the things which are present there, which helps in um, produ producing the ATP molecules. So if you talk about each of these membranes chemically, the outer membrane or the inner membrane, so their chemical composition is quite similar to the plasma membrane. That is, they mostly consist of phospholipids and proteins. We spoke about the pro uh, uh, lipid bilayer structure. So mostly lipids and proteins. And as I already mentioned, the main process which takes place in mitochondria is the production of ATP molecules. Let us look at mitochondria in an animal cell. So this is the animal cell and where do we see mitochondria? This is present here. So this structure is the mitochondria. Now it can be many in number. You see this is also mitochondria. This is again a mitochondria. So it can be many in number and it is uniformly distributed throughout the cytoplasm. So here you can see the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the cristae the matrix, everything is visible from here. Now let us have a look at mitochondria in plant cells. Where do we see here in plant cells? So here again you can see here, this is the mitochondria, this is the mitochondria. So the structure of mitochondria is similar in case of plant cells as well as animal cells. Obviously it has to be because this is the powerhouse of cell. So whether it is a plant or an animal, they need mitochondria because they need energy. To sum up our discussion, let us look at how what makes mitochondria so significant. Needless to say, it is the powerhouse of cell. It is the site where glucose is oxidized to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy in the form of ATP molecules. We have discussed about cellular respiration in our junior classes. So energy is released in the form of ATP molecules that is adenosine triphosphate molecules. They can synthesize their own proteins as they have their own DNA and ribosome. I showed you in the picture since they have their own DNA because sometimes some of the cell organelles, they do not have their own ribosomes. So there are ribosomes which are located, which are freely found in the cytoplasm. So they have to depend on the proteins which are synthesized by those ribosomes and then sent to them. But mitochondria have ribosomes inside them so they can synthesize their own proteins. So there is the DNA and ribosomes, which together will help in protein synthesis. So I think that's all about mitochondria. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.